Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to uh, shift gears just a little bit, just um, primarily from where we were reading out of Isaiah 9, but the theme will continue because the the theme is always about the adoption or the sonship of what God is after. And what it really entails or it takes for God's people to come into the full place of maturity um, as Paul wrote in Ephesians unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God is after the fullness of Christ Jesus in his people. And so um, we read it at the end of Isaiah there, and we talked about it for a, a couple of moments. And uh, it's the zeal of the Lord that will perform this. Only him alone. Because you can always tell when man has its fingers on it, right? It always dies and always comes to an end. But what God is after is uh, permanency, you know, something that will last forever. So it takes, it takes um, you know, what he's building, it takes time. Now, people want him to hurry up, but, you know, he's not in the business of making junk, throw away junk. Costs a lot of money, but it isn't worth hardly anything. Bug. So, you know, and as we were, <coughs> excuse me, as we were, uh, you know, going through that and stuff, I, I had um, mentioned, I don't know, a couple of weeks back. Ooh, it has one tub bug. Sorry about that, but he's dead now, or she, whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I mentioned a verse. Uh, it's, it's a verse that I, I like a lot. I, I think I, no, I didn't, I didn't actually text that verse out. But I did text some verses out of the same chapter of the book of Job. And, um, and so I've kind of been reading a little bit of, of this chapter uh, 23, which I absolutely love. But, you know, it, it's always good to go back and sometimes read, and then God begins to just talk, especially, especially right? Like, I love the way God deals with me. He deals with me where I'm at and what I'm doing. And it makes it very relatable. Um, it also shows what God, how he functions in people's lives is that he, <coughs> excuse me, meets us where we're at, right, to get us to come where he is. This is why he's always saying to come up higher. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Went down the wrong pipe or something. So anyway, if you turn with me, I, 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 I would like to go through the whole thing. My, my, my verse that I really love all the time is verse 10, but like I, I was stalled before I got to verse 10 because God began to talk to me, and I, like, I never saw this before. But as I begin to read it, and I, I literally, you know, have been looking at it for like, I don't know, a couple, of, maybe a week or so. I don't know. And so this morning I just sat and I made notes. So I don't normally do that, but I'm going to try to just read my notes. And um, I pray that it really registers and feed your spirit because what God is after is having us grow up. 
He's not interested in us being propped up by other people. He wants us to grow up, not to be complainers, but to be joints of supply. Joined together one to another. How do you know when you don't belong to God? You complain all the time about your circumstance. And that's why I love the book of Job. Now, a lot of people will just relegate it to an Old Testament book, but they never ever saw the picture or experienced the reality of the suffering Jehovah. A picture of Jesus and his brethren who God picks out to pick on. Oh, no, I'm in the New Testament. Jesus doesn't do that. They don't know God. They never met him. They only are parrots to a message and never experience the reality. Watch this. Something has to die on the road to Ephrata. Now, it may seem like I took this big old loop when we started talking about Benjamin and we ended up in Isaiah where the wolf will, what, lie down with the lamb. But the reality has always been about a changed nature. So that a fresh character and authority and an honor and a glory, and everything that comes with God is now manifested. A true revelation. Hello, we are the book of Revelation. It is the revealing of the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ in his people. If it were not so, you have no right to Jesus in your heart. That life and that seed only has one desire, and that's to be made flesh. That's it. So I love this, and I'm just going to read my notes today. Is all right, Dale, so you can go home in 23 minutes or whatever it is. But I'm going to read the, the two verses I want to. Ten is my favorite. It's one of my favorite verses in the book of Job because the thing about it is, is about Job is like, you know, um, who picked the fight? God. The devil didn't pick the fight. Oh, you consider my servant Job? Oh, not a problem. Do whatever you want to him. But you can't kill him. They did whatever they wanted to Jesus, but they couldn't kill him. He said, I give up my life. And the reason I do that is because I love my father. And I know he'll raise me up again. Oh, yeah. And so I like verse 10, but I want to get to, I just want to read 8 and 9. And so, you know, you, you get to 23, and he's listened to all of his religious friends. The first three guys, they're just pictures of babyhood Christianity. They want to play the blame game why nothing is happening right in your life. Then Elihu comes up, and he has some wonderful things to say, but the reality is he is mixed. He's in the middle court. And really, to become a hundredfolder, it wasn't until God began to talk to Job and really unlock who he was inside of him. But Job, after listening to all the nonsense of all those Christians, of why he was in the position he was in, he had a revelation, even though he wasn't there yet. And he couldn't find God but he had a revelation. 
of what it was going to take when it looked like nothing was going on in his life. So if you turn with me, just go home and read it. I'm not going to take the time. I already wasted like five minutes of my note time. I just want to read the two verses. I'm going to go to my notes. And really, my notes are just the Strong's Concordance. It's something that turns me on and lights me up because it reveals the Father's heart for a people and what he's really after. So verse, oh, geez, verse 8, let's just read them, okay. Just, behold, this is Job speaking now. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. This is, a, this is like, what I'm going to read in these two verses. These are hidden secrets in most Christians' heart. I look for God, but I can't find him. Look at, listen, behold, I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth. This is really important here. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. I'll just read my little kind of fit, but he knoweth the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Gold. So Corey, I already labeled the, I already labeled this one the test of faith. Yeah. The trying of your faith, right? It's more precious than gold. But what did he say in James about our faith? Patience worketh, right? So that we what? Lack nothing. Lack nothing. Twenty-first modern American Christian has turned that into material goods. The greatest inheritance you will ever have is what God has given us through His lineage and His children or His sons and daughters who literally follow Him. They're not all mouth. their word and deed. One must diligently seek his face. And Job said, Behold, I go forward. Now listen to this. This is what I found when I started looking at these words and I thought it was so cool. Here it goes. The word forward literally means front. And now I add some of my own stuff into the, what like when things come to my heart. When I think of the front, I think of the face, I think of the image, I think of the very thing or the very essence of who God is and how he desires you and I. And this is what Job says, I went forward, but I didn't see him. It, it literally shows the front. It also says here, the east. Now this becomes important. If you notice, we listed four things. I go forward, I go back. I'm on the left and I'm on the right. And he shows us here that going forward is east. And when I begin to read that, I all of a sudden begin to think of the verse where Paul said in Philippians 3, I think about verse 14, he says, I press toward the mark. I go forward. Of the prize of the High calling. I'm not just interested in being a Christian and coming to church and sit in a pew and go home and do my thing. No, I press toward the high calling. And then all of a sudden, which is the mark, the character of the prize in Christ Jesus. It's also the place where the sun comes up in the east. We've entered a new day. 
Oh, every new day starts out dark in God's economy. Oh, not at 12 o'clock midnight, but in the evening. And then comes the morning. Because the end of a thing is better than the beginning. It doesn't matter how you start out. A lot of people get born again, but it's how you finish the race. Because God isn't after just a spirit. He's after the soul and the body. The sun rises in the east. It's a new day. And then I remember Peter saying to you and I, let the day star arise in your heart. Job went forward, but he couldn't see him. Couldn't see his face. He was bound down in his own way of thinking and all the voices around him. They were telling him he was in that condition because God was punishing him. And God certainly wasn't punishing him. No, no, no. And when he said he was not there, it reminded me of Romans 11 at the end we were talking about, remember? And it said, oh, how unsearchable are his ways. His riches are unsearchable. His ways are unsearchable. You will not find him without pressing forward into the very face and image of God, which we behold in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is what happens when I read. Seriously, so I just wrote it down. And then it says, then he says this, he said, backward, behold, I go backward. Backward. It says it's the hinder part. Behind, backward. Also, it pictures the West. The sun arises, but when things set, it's behind us. It's behind us. I remember when we were uh, in um, Key West and we wanted to go down to the, you know, everybody was going down to see the sunset and everybody was climbing in it, you know, and I was like, you know, like you, you couldn't get in there. You couldn't see and, and the whole works. And, and I remember there were two old ladies and I said, you know, I'd rather see the sun rise. And they got my point. I'd rather be seeing it come up than go down. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Nobody's disputing that. But the Bible declares the sun will rise and never set because there will be no night. When will I get some sleep? You won't be like him if you need sleep. How do you know that? He never slumbers, nor does he ever sleep. This is the radicalness of God changing the way we think. By transforming our lives. The West, the afterward, the back part, the backside. Do you want the backside of God? What he did yesterday? That's what I started thinking about. He told them when they went out to get manna, don't save anything from yesterday. And we know the prophet Elisha told them that when they were eating Ass's head, human wisdom, and dove's dung, which was leftovers from yesterday. Human wisdom is from yesterday. How do you know that? There's only been two people on the earth, Adam and Christ. 
And human wisdom chose to do the opposite of what God asked him not to do. Human wisdom. It looked good. It felt good. Oh, God will forgive me. And He did. But it certainly put the hurt on all of humanity all the way to Jesus or Joseph being the last son, the last of Adam in order to have a new son a Benjamin. He went forward. He went backward. He went east. He looked to the east. I went to the far ends of the east and the far ends of the west. He said, I couldn't perceive him. I could not perceive him. Mentally separate, distinguish because of mixture in the mind. He couldn't tell that God was with him right there. Mixed thinking is the middle court. It's the Pentecostal realm. A little bit of God and a little bit of me. It is not the most holy place. I'd love to go back to first ver- one where he talks about that I might come to his seat, his throne, the most holy place. Oh, the mercy seat in the most holy place. Yeah, the place where God meets us, where it's all gold, the divine nature, inside and out. The king's daughter, she's wrought with gold. I don't have time to go there in Psalms. The kingdom does not come by perception or observation. I'm just telling you, these are the verses that, like, it's not in the West. It's not how you do things from a natural realm. It's made alive by the realm of God's spirit. I'm here only to feed your spirit tonight. Your head will complain if you don't like Jesus. But your heart will jump when he changes you. Remember when? Yeah, this is what he said to his disciples. You'll remember. Oh, you remember when he said that to us? Like, you can hear the best preacher in the whole wide world, and you can listen to the best doctrine, but if you don't ever hear Jesus, it'll just make you a parrot that someone else has to feed you to keep you alive. And your cage will be a religious system that never lets you go free. The East and the West... He couldn't find him. In verse 9, it says, On the left hand where he does work, the left hand properly is dark or enveloped. That is the north. Where does the king dwell? On the north side. The north side. Hence, by orientation, the left hand. Now we're getting to see that what God is after. Paul, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Job had to universally look Every single place in the planet, and he could not locate him. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's in heaven. No. (laughs) No, he lives inside of us. It says he works, he labors, he creates, he does things. John 1, 3 says this. Look, all things were made by him. And without him was not not a thing made that was made. Not one thing. This will mess up most Christians, but if you go to Isaiah 45, it says, I create the darkness and I create the evil. I like that, God. 
He didn't say he does those things. He said he let there be a standard created what it is. Man does it. God. The one and only true God. Imprisoned in the stinking thinking of his people. Yeah. Yesterday's word. Yesterday's life. Yesterday's manna. What happened to yesterday's manna if you kept it? It got worms in it. And it rotted. And the worms for one thing only. Like a maggot. It just eats dead things. Dead things. Colossians 1.16, for by him were all things created, all things that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. I love invisible light. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. That'll make your life real easy. When you come to a realization you are not your own, that he created you for himself. And the clay does not get to say to the potter, make me this way. No. The true lump of clay says, not my will, but thy will be done. Shape me into your image after your likeness. Yeah. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. The word behold, a primitive root to gaze at, mentally to perceive, contemplate with pleasure, specifically of having a vision. Of behold, look, prophecy, provide, see. He looked to the east, to the west. He looked to the north. And then he says here, He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. You remember when Philip, I think it was, said to Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus said, he's right here. Have I been with you so long for this amount of time and you have never, ever recognized the Father in me? Oh, no, 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 no. You're the son of Joseph and Mary, the carpenter's son. Oh, how they were so wrong. They couldn't see beyond the flesh. Job is experiencing a moment that he can't see beyond his circumstance, his situation. Yeah. The right hand or the right side, the right leg, the right eye of a person or other object as the stronger and more dexterous. Locally, it literally pictures the south. The south. Left-handed. But the word that's really important at this point venue here to the south is the word hideth. It literally means to shroud or clothe. This brings us full circle back to Benjamin. What did Joseph give him? Five changes of raiment. Now all of his other brothers only got one. God doesn't play favors. Yes, he does. Just like people do. 
but not the way people do. Just to clarify, so no one misunderstands. In the book of Revelation, it says, to him who overcomes will I grant. In Revelation 21, 7, it says, who overcomes, I will, what? Oh, they shall do what? Inherit everything I created, everything I have. And they'll be my son, and I'll be their God. It means to clothe, cover with a garment, hence the idea of darkness, to cover over. God hides himself. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter himself. And it's the honor of kings to search it out, those that diligently seek him. Here Job was. He was going to the four corners of the earth and he could not locate God. And all of a sudden he has an epiphany hidden there in the darkness as an opportunity for a covering or a change. The invisibleness of God to be revealed, to be manifested. Yeah. Oh, how good it is. Benjamin is now clothed with life and immortality. Amen. And this is why he says then in verse 10, I'll go back to it, but I'm going to read it in the, in the Living Bible, but he knows every detail of what is happening to me. Don't listen to anyone else who says, well, there's nothing going on there. You know why they're in trouble. You know why it's like that. You know why, you know why, you know why. No, he knows every detail. Every detail. Because now Job has an understanding what gold has to go through, the divine nature, in order to be pure. But he knows every detail of what is happening to me. And when he has examined me thoroughly, like I'd love to talk about the touchstone in Revelation 12 when it talks about the man, man child, where he takes it and he, whew, what it was was a stone that they rubbed on it. And if it was pure, it would leave a perfect mark. We have the same thing when you do now with a $100 bill or whatever. You have to use light or whatever it is, but the principle is the same. It's genuine. It's not a counterfeit. It's not a look-alike. It's not a pretender. I've said this for a long time. How do you determine the difference between a pretending Christian and a contending Christian? Is one who can stand in the fire without complaining. He said, I have chosen you out of the furnace of affliction. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Job went in all directions, but he could not find God. Job cannot see God. He cannot perceive a trace of his presence or his workings. The hiding of God gives the bitterest pain of all. No agonizing in prayer or writhing in self-effort can compel him, God, to unveil his face when he hides himself in thick darkness. Job tried everything he could. But God wasn't changing his mind. Because God already saw chapter 42 of Job, even if Job did not. Oh, hallelujah. Now you and I, we have the benefit of the New Testament. That we understand that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Where? 
the Bible says in us or through us. Yeah. There is no answer for Job, right? There is no answer. But if Job cannot see God, God certainly can see Job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is driven to an agonizing cry because of his friends. Then his spirit breaks free in triumph faith in the living God. This is why he said, I understand gold. And God is doing the same to our own lives. When it looks like nothing's happening, patience is being developed so that we will lack nothing. What good does it do to send a more half-hearted, half-brain alive Christians to the world when they can't even get out of their own self-life? Oh, this is good news, that there's an answer when it seems like there's no answer. There's a life when there seems like there's no life. But God isn't here. He's not here to make us happy people in humanity. He came to give abundant life in Christ. Yeah. Gold always has to be purified by fire. He knew now that Jehovah or Jesus was only trying him and not punishing him like everybody around him was telling him. Yeah. Job knew that he had not swerved from his fixed position of the purpose of God in his life. Yeah, don't swerve. Stay a pillar, permanent. Yeah. Even though Rachel died, Jacob, Israel, kept going to Ephrata. Then we have the secret of Job's fear of the Lord and his dread of sin. There's the thing everybody should be afraid of. No matter what anyone says, what is the payment for sin? Death. There's no magic kingdom. There's only a manifested kingdom. Incorruption must be put on. Immortality must be put on. He hideth or he clothes himself in those areas. Job's knowledge of the character of God comes out very clearly again and again. Here he shows that he knows God as the changeless one. But now Job does not know how the fire of this immutable God, he's a consuming fire, is doing its work in him. He didn't know. Job will grow. And enlarge his heart as his heart is softened and melted by the fire. I think about Stephen when he stood there and he saw the Lord and he, he declared all the history of Israel to his brothers. And he said they were hard hearted and stiff necked. And I just read the other day how Jesus in his own town, his own church, they were amazed at what he could do. And yet, their hearts were so hard, they were ready to throw him over a cliff. And all he said was, there were a lot of widows in Israel, but he didn't come to you. He went to the widow in Seraphath. And the reason he went to her, better get this quick, the Lord had commanded her 
And she didn't even know it yet. Elijah, go see this widow woman. I have commanded her to take care of you. I tell you guys all the time. We sat around the other day and this is what we talk about. The only thing God wants to do is move in the impossible. If if it's not impossible in your life, you could do it yourself. You don't need God. He wants to do the impossible. God has different times or days for dealing with souls. God has a time for all things. And those who know him should see and understand his days or his time or what he's doing. Let's stand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know what? I'm so glad he's in our midst. The question is, do you recognize him? Do you see him? Or do you think it's just a bunch of people doing their own thing? You check your own mind and your own heart. But if you want what God wants, let him change us. Ah, Zion heard and was glad. The daughters of Judah rejoice. God, we rejoice in thy judgments. For thou art exalted high above the earth. So God, take this word. Let it permeate our lives. Let it change our lives. Jesus, help us. Help us, Jesus. Lord, that your name would be glorified in the earth. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Something happens when we...